Good morning, Hammers fans. It's Nick from Claret and Booze, and welcome to my daily ramble. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit that bell notification button, and drop a like on the video, please. It does really help us. Right, Mohamed Kudush, first off. Obviously, a lot of people were fretting that Mohamed Kudush played for Ajax last night, didn't just play, got man in the match, scored a hat trick. Oh, well, that's it. He can't feature for us in the Europa League anymore. No, don't panic. It doesn't matter. Uh, the rules have changed. It's fine. He can. He can leave and come and play for us. So Ajax needed him yesterday. Uh, they, they they battered Ludogretz, or particularly Kudosh battered Ludogretz. And um, he was interviewed after the game. I don't know whether you've all seen it. Most of you probably have. Uh, so he's interviewed by Dutch TV and uh, and, and they, 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 they kind of said to him initially, you know, do you, do you think this will be your last game? Um, and, he, and he said, yeah, yeah, I think it will be. Uh, I won't go through the whole interview, but then they they kind of were talking about trying to probe him about where he's going to go. And they asked him about West Ham and he sort of went, West Ham? Yeah, it's a good club. And he looked away. Couldn't look. He had a big smirk on his face. So I do think this is done. I do think this is done. There's obviously threats from, there. there, there is a threat from Saudi clubs coming in and nabbing him at the last minute. We know that that would be the preference of his agents because they're trying to cash in on this deal. I, I believe this is their last chance saloon window to do this because the, the legislation's changing next year. So this is the last time that agents can really, really act the way they're acting at the moment. So they would obviously prefer the big money deal from Saudi because they'd get more money out of it. But the player has already turned down, I believe, a move to Saudi in the past. He's turned down Brighton. He wants a bit of West Ham. He wants a bit of pie and mash. So, um, yeah, if you haven't seen it, you you probably all seen his show reels anyway, but he's mustard. The the the, the you know he, he's he's fantastic. He was playing on the right wing yesterday. Scored scored three goals. Um, interestingly, he's never really played on the left wing, which is where I think that we're going to utilize him. But come on, he's he's played everywhere else. He's played down the middle. He's played he's played a false nine. He's played a striker. He's played a central attacking midfielder. He's played a number eight. He's played a right wing. He ain't played left wing, but there ain't that much difference. He's a talented boy. He'd be fine. It'd be good. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I think we're going to do. We, we, we uh, I do think he's coming in as a Benny replacement. I do expect this one to happen. You can't... Listen, I know that people are saying, you know, until he's wearing his shirt, until he's wearing his shirt, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. Stop talking about it until he's wearing his shirt. Right? Well, that's changed a little bit now, isn't it? Because I don't know if you've seen the meme. It's gone from, I, I won't believe it until he's wearing a shirt, to I won't believe it until he's sitting on old Timmy Starton's plane. We haven't had the picture yet, but I can't wait for that one. It's going to be a hat trick. A hat trick of a uh, private jet snaps with uh, with Tim Starton looking all smug with his new signings. So, yeah, that, that's that's um, that's what we're waiting for today. It, Tim is over in Bulgaria at the moment. He was literally on him. He rugby tackled him as soon as he was given the man in the match award. Dragged him out the back to sort of finish these um, uh, negotiations that need to be done. And then that man, Kadush, will be heading Stratford bound for his medical. That's what's going to be happening. Tim won't let him out of his sight. It ain't going to happen. He don't do it. He, uh, uh, he don't take no for an answer, Tim. He went to he went to Ajax first time. Alvarez brought Alvarez back. Alvarez played ball. Well, Kadush and his representatives have tried to push back on the deal, haven't they? But um, Tim has managed to convince this guy that West Ham is the place to be. He's been back and forth a few times, and now he's followed him out to Bulgaria. And yes, escaped without injury. All good. Fantastic. He's not going to be here in time for Brighton, which is the bummer, because I would have really liked another attacking option for that game. But we're not going to have that. Um, so yes, Mohamed Kudush, I do expect it to happen. We could get gazumps at the last minute. Somebody else could come in. But the player does want to come to us. So we're almost there. We've just got to get it signed. Get it signed. None of this two-day medical bollocks, you know? Stick him on a treadmill for 20 minutes and then get him to sign a contract. Job done. Job done. Um, talking about Tim Stuyton, I, 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 we've, we've got to give him a mention. I know we've spoken about him a lot already, but how refreshing is this, honestly, at this point? Bearing in mind, he's only had a couple of weeks to do this because we had to pander to David Moyes for the lion's share of the window while he went out aimlessly trying to get his targets in. You know, he wouldn't have it. No, Premier League proven, got to get these players in. They didn't want to come. He's wasted his time. This window is is hopefully permanently put David Moyes back in his box when it comes to when it comes to signing players. That's what this has done. Because he spent weeks, he wasted weeks chasing the same targets over and over again. Maguire, McTominay, Gallagher. They didn't want to come. They didn't want to come. 
And then Tim's come. Tim stepped in. He's obviously done all the prep work. He's been sitting there in the background. East chance has come. They've said, right, Dave, look, your targets don't want to come, mate. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to hand the reins over to Timmy boy. And off he pops. Off he pops. And you start seeing players coming in. Proper action. No silly bids. No silly, you know, negotiations. These things are done pretty, pretty quickly. Once he's got his eye on someone, he hones in and he won't, he won't let them out of his sight until a deal is done. This is proper. This is this is proper business that we're doing now, and it, was, it is so refreshing. So well done, Tim. Well done, Tim. And um, yes, I hope that um, I hope for many more years of this because this is lovely. Hopefully, if he's got control moving into the next window, we won't have to wait until the last two weeks. He might even have all of this legwork done before we go into a window. So that we start seeing players come through a door early so they can have play time before the season starts. So we're good to go. How about that? Even though we ain't started terribly this season. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm over the moon with Tim Stott. And I think, I think he is the best signing that David Sullivan has made at West Ham ever. I'm going to call it now. The best ever. Tim Stott. That's it. He's going to change the club. Now, obviously, David Moyes has got no choice now but to jump on board. It's going to be interesting to see what he does with these players that are brought in. You know, is Alvarez going to get any first-team game time this side of Christmas? Is Mavropanos going to end up shunted out to right back? Is Caduce going to be played in the one position that he struggles to play in? We don't know. We're going to have to find out. But ultimately, it's going to be results-based now. Like I said the other day, I don't think that David Moyes is here beyond this summer. Uh, this uh, Sorry, this season. He's not. Uh, he's going to see his, his contract out and then he is gone. He is going to want to go out on a high on his terms, um, which is why we're playing this style of football. And, and to a degree, we're providing him with players that can play that style of football as well, but they can also play a progressive style. We've got footballers now. We've got a couple of players left, a couple of stragglers that you probably wouldn't regard as players that fit into a progressive football team, a team that passes the ball. Suchek and Sufel. There aren't really many others. You know, the majority of the, the rest of those players are technically gifted. Um, right, talking about players that are going out, which I didn't really want to do because this kind of, you get good news and then you get fucking bad news at the end. Pablo Fornells, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want him to go. I know he's only got a year left. Well, if David Moyes is only here, is only here for one more year, then they've got to get Pablo Fornells around the table and they've got to say to him, look, you know, because he will he will form part of any manager's plans that wants to play in a progressive way because that is, that is Pablo Fornells. That's his game. We can't let him go. We can't let him go. I don't want to let him go. I want him to stay. Uh, that would be heartbreaking for me. Even with the other signings that we've brought in, that isn't going to soften the blow with, with Pablo. I want him to stay, you know. Um, Danny Ings could be moving out as well. Uh, that's probably better for the player. Um, he's getting older and he just he, he will never fit into this David Moyes system and he's look, he's he's at the age where he needs to be playing otherwise he's going to seize up and rigor mortis is going to set in he's got to get out there and get some game time so if we can sell uh, Danny Ings I would um, Mabama if David Moyes is here for the season loan him out let him skip David Moyes for fuck's sake um, so just loan him out send him somewhere where he's going to get some game time score some goals he can come back next season and hopefully, you know, start working his way into the new manager's plans um, because he isn't going to get much game time in anything other than a, a meaningless dead rubber for, for David Moyes. And in that dead rubber, he could score a hat trick, but he won't be back in the next game. So I, I do think Loma Barmer out. Uh, Mikel Antonio, I think irrespective of whether we sign another striker now, I know this is going to, a lot of people are not going to agree with this because there's just a lot of hate for Antonio now. Well, <clears throat> I haven't got any hate for him. I found him irritating the last year because he's been pushing for a move publicly. I'd keep him. I'd keep him this season. Um, I think he's too valuable. When you play the way that David Moyes does, there isn't really anyone else that does it any better than Antonio. So although we've got to add to that position and get um, and get other options, someone like an Enesiri or Ekatike, keep Antonio. Don't let him go. We've got we've, we want to tackle. We want to attack all the competitions this year. We've got the Europa League. You've got the domestic cups. You know, we'll get ourselves safe in the league so we ain't got to worry about the league too much and just attack the cup competitions. See if we can get another bit of silverware. That's what we've got to do. Um, so, no, I wouldn't let Mickey go. Um, I think Ben Rama will stay as well. There's rumours that Ben Rama will go. He might go um, in January or the or the, or the the season after, depending on how much game time he gets this season. But I think the time has come probably for Benny, which is a shame because I really like Benny, but he just flatters to, de to deceive, doesn't he? 
And we've said before, the reason that we get so frustrated with Benny is because we know he's so talented, but he under-delivers. You know, you, you wouldn't expect Soufal to do what, what we expect of Benny, but, you know, different types of players, different positions. Um, but, yeah, look, that's it from me. We've got, uh, we've got a big game against Bourne, uh, Brighton coming up on Saturday, 5.30. I'll be here to do the post-match reaction. Um, I'm not expecting anything from this one. I'm going to stick to negativity. I, I, I said we was going to get... Um, I'll change in the morning. I'll get all optimistic in the morning. But at the moment, I don't see us getting anything out of Brighton. It isn't just that they're a, they're a bogey team. They're a good team. I think in terms of a team... You don't look at don't look at the sum of the parts of these teams because it's irrelevant when you're talking about Brighton. Because on paper, West Ham are a far superior team. But this is where having a top coach comes into play. Because a team becomes more than the sum of its parts. We are less than the sum of our parts. That's a fact, you know. Um I do think we're gonna get beat. They're a good team. Uh not saying we'll get battered because Moyes is gonna try and low block it up, as he always does. You know, the new term, low block for sitting 10 men behind the ball. Yeah. Um, so he's, he'll, he'll he'll do that um, and we'll try and hit them on the counter-attack. I'm sure at some point he'll, you know, he'll, he'll pull it off. We've got, we've got to break this duck at some point against Brighton. I can't see it, though. You know, they've had two fantastic results in, the, in their first two games of the season. I do think they'll beat us. I hope they don't. I want this run to stop. It would be amazing. It would be. I think we need an open bus parade if we beat Brighton, you know, Uh but if and when we do, that's going to be amazing because we haven't we haven't beat them in the top flight, so it would be good. Um, yeah, fantastic. But like I say, it's not because they're a bogey team because a bogey team suggests you're playing someone who's shit that always gets one up on you. No, we're playing someone who's better than us, and they're always getting one up on us. And like I said, when I say better than us, they are, and that is down to coaching. That's what great coaching and a great club structure can do. You can have lesser players that are far superior to superior players in another team, which is what we've got, which is what I would say, even say, I don't know, like, like Man United, even though they've got you, what you consider to be a great coach in Van Gaal, they don't look any different, do they? They don't look any different to what they did under bloody Solskjaer, to be honest. So, no, that's something we've got to work on. We've got Tim Stighton in place. This is brilliant. We're sorting out recruitment. The next stage is going to be getting that coaching staff in place and getting the, um, the new manager that can realise the dream. That's going to be the next stage, but I don't think we're going to we're going to see that until the summer because I don't think we're going to struggle this year, and that's the only way that David Moyes would not see out his contract is if we was going to go into these first five or six games and, and really struggle and get no fucking points and be down the bottom. They'd have got rid of him, but if we're safe, they're not going to they're not going to pay him off, are they? They're going to leave, they're going to leave it until the summer. So yeah, it is what it is. What it is, we are we are with that. But look, I'm going to try my best to get excited with the players that we're bringing in, the, the style of players. Think how bad it could have been. This is the thing, David Moyes. If he'd have got his way, he'd have spunked all this money on McTominay, get Maguire, and James Will Prowse. That would have been it. That would have been our window done. That would have been. But no, thank God, praise the Lord. Half of them didn't want to come, or two thirds of them didn't want to come. And Tim's been able to, to, to work his magic. So I think we've had a touch. Um, the building blocks for the future have been laid. Let's just get through this year. Hopefully get a few good wins, a few good performances, maybe get a trophy. Yeah, come on. Let me know what your your uh, predictions are for tomorrow against Brighton anyway. Um, I'm I'm not hopeful. All right. Uh, so yeah, I'm not hopeful at all. All right. Speak to you soon. Gam you ads.